What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ and today I want to talk about the pause squat and more specifically a couple tips to help you perfect it and why I'm talking about this is first of all because in my strength linear control program the pause squat is a main movement in that program. It's six sets of four reps on the control days so it's a lot of volume in that particular movement so we need to focus on making sure that we're all doing it correctly. And then the second reason is just because I promote paw squats in general, and I think that they're just a very effective variation specifically for the raw power lifter. So there are just multiple points I want to go over here. And the first one is that what you need to do when you're looking at how you're going to perform the paw squat is you need to decide what role it has in your programming. And the real dichotomy that we're dealing with is whether you're trying to just focus muscular strength in general, or if you're looking on improving technique on strength in a specific position. And if it is the first way where you're just trying to increase muscular strength, you would use that as an accessory movement, or at least I would recommend that. Never start that out as a main lift. So what I mean by that is, let's say you're doing low bar back squats heavy, and then you just wanna do pause Olympic squats afterwards just to build quad strength. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter the specifics of how you perform that movement because technique is not that crucial. It's just crucial that you're obviously doing it safely and effectively, but it's not that crucial in terms of carryover because you're not looking for maximum carryover in terms of technique to the competition lift. However, if you have it set up like my linear program where it is a main lift, then what we need to focus on is emulating the standard back squat as effectively as possible besides the fact that it is paused. All right, so the tips from here are going to be assuming that you are using the pause squat as a main movement. And the first point I have to make is that I strongly do not advise that you alter the bar position when it comes to doing the pause squat. And I see this, a lot of people have told me this, that they do the high bar pause squat and then they do the competition low bar squat on strength days. And I just don't advocate this. I don't think that this is a smart decision. I think that you can mix high and low bar squats but I don't advocate using it concurrently as a main lift that you're focusing on first. And also another point is the fact that you want the bottom position to be exactly the same in the paw squat as in the regular back squat. And specifically what I see often is the fact that in the paw squat, people will typically go a little bit lower and they'll allow for more forward knee travel. And that's because this is just a comfortable position to be in because you're more upright. However, the problem is is the fact that it's easier on your hips so that your hips don't get strengthened from that bottom position that you would be in in the standard squat. So that's where the carryover often has some issues and it teaches you some bad movement patterns because now you're training two different styles concurrently which generally can confuse you when it comes to having a one rep max on your back. So I would honestly say that that issue of being more upright in the pause squat than in the regular back squat is probably the most common that I've ever seen. I almost see it all the time. And the thing is, if you want to then realize that maybe that pause squat forms better for you to be more upright, then you need to adjust that in your regular back squat. Just don't keep these two different is my point. Now the point that I actually did wrong, and I've probably done wrong for the majority of my life doing pause squats, is going too slow on the eccentric phase when you're lowering the weight down. And the reason why that this is easy to do is because naturally in a pause squat, you're a little bit more tense because you're essentially anticipating that pause. So you just go down a little bit slower to make sure you're staying tight. However, a problem occurs because this affects the transfer once again into the standard back squat because what happens is you can become hesitant under heavy loads. Also another huge benefit when you squat down with the exact same eccentric phase is the fact that it helps with breathing because then you can get a big breath, then you go down into the pause squat and then hold it and come back up strong. However, what happens when you go down too slow is typically you'll see someone get their air and then because they're going down so slow, by the time they hit the bottom position, then they let that air out because they can't hold it the whole time. So obviously this decreases intra-abdominal pressure, which hurts your ability to maintain stability in your core. Another point I have is to videotape yourself during your sets so that you can check the duration of your pauses and make sure that they are in fact consistent. And the reason why I bring this up is because particularly with this movement, it's easy to cheat it. Because what happens is it's connected to the slow eccentric part I talked about. A lot of times people make that mistake, they'll go down slower, and then they feel like they paused longer than they actually did. And this has happened to me many times, where it felt like I paused for a solid two seconds, and then I check and it barely looks like I even paused at all. So that's the biggest thing, 
is I don't have any specific recommendation as far as the duration of your pause. I think that's up to you. A three count pause is common, but you could do just a solid one second pause. Whatever you find works well for you. But the important part is that it's consistent because otherwise what can happen, and this happens to beginners, this really impacts them, is you begin cheating yourself and then you don't actually see your progress. And marking your progress so that you're able to tell how effective your training is, is possibly one of the most important factors when it comes to getting stronger over time. All right, that's it guys. I hope this video helped. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching guys. Peace.